the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. The day, this is the day when he rose again, when he rose again. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day when he rose again, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when he rose again. The day, this is the day when the Spirit came, when the Spirit came. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day when the Spirit came, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when the Spirit came. Welcome, one and all, to our service today. A service celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, the day the Church received the Holy Spirit, the birthday of the Church. So I hope you've had a, a wonderful week. I hope you're traveling well through this time. And I, I pray that our service today, uh, you will experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your lives. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, says the Lord, and let the one who believes in me drink. For out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. The spirit of truth comes to convict of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Let us then open our hearts and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us, by your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free of your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, at the Feast of Pentecost, you sent your Holy Spirit to the disciples, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. Empower us with that same spirit to witness to your redeeming love and draw all people to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. 
to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. That I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with Thee I will and will. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Don. Don. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A number of years ago, before uh, going into priestly ministry, before being a, a school chaplain and a high school teacher, I was a scuba diver instructor. And I have some uh, very fond memories of those scuba diving days. I, I still scuba dive, but very, very rarely. Uh, I'm more comfortable now being on top of the water with a fishing rod than under the water with a, uh, a camera. But um, one of the things that I was certainly very aware of and would have to teach new scuba divers is to be very aware of your breathing. Breathe too fast and you'd go through your, dive your air tank too quickly. 
breathe too slow and you could build up uh, carbon dioxide levels that could be unhealthy for you. Um, you couldn't hold your breath. Holding your breath could lead to a, uh, an injury of the lungs. Regularly, you'd be buddied up, two divers would be a buddy team, and you'd regularly check each other's air to make sure that neither of you were gonna run out before um, safely uh, ascending back to the surface. So you were very aware of your breathing uh, when scuba diving. Experienced divers uh, were even able to, just by simply inhaling, uh, change their buoyancy and start to float up. And by simply exhaling, again, uh, change their buoyancy negatively and start to sink. So it was a matter of fine tuning uh, your equipment and your breathing. So how does any of this relate to the, the, the gospel reading today um, of Jesus imparting the Holy Spirit on his disciples? Well, I want to focus on that bit where Jesus breathed on them. That's the key aspect that I'm wanting to, uh, to draw from and what it is that he breathed on them and why he breathed on them. So in this passage today, this, this gospel reading is a bit different to the Pentecost account. I know we're celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, but the, the Pentecost account in the, in the reading from Acts, Acts 2, uh, um, verse uh, 1 to 4 and a little bit further on. And you can read that yourself if you'd like. That happens at Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. Whereas in today's reading, it's the, uh, the following Sunday of Jesus' resurrection when he appears to the, the disciples and uh, without Thomas being there. So it's a bit different uh, to the Pentecost account, but it's still about the imparting of the Holy Spirit, which is what we celebrate at Pentecost, the reception of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. So in this reading, uh, Jesus appears to the disciples and he says, peace be with you. And that's the reason for Jesus in our lives, to bring us that peace. And then he breathes on them. Now, any, anyone who knows me knows I'm a bit of a germaphobe. And uh, the idea of somebody breathing on me or coughing on me or sneezing on me, even before COVID-19, would have given me the, the cringes. Uh, and even more so now, we're all so aware of that social distancing and being aware of not coughing on each other or sneezing or breathing, uh, coughing into our elbows. But Jesus breathes on them. And then he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to say, those, uh, those sins who, who you uh, forgive are forgiven, and those whose sins you retain are retained. And he reminds them, this comes a little bit before, but he reminds them, just as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. So when we look at this passage, this gospel reading today, there's a number of things that, that strike me. Jesus uh, comes to bring us peace. But it's also not a, a, a peace that requires us just to be comfortable in our own homes, comfortable in our own churches, comfortable in our own social setting. Jesus comes to bring us peace, a peace for the world, but then also comes to send us out. Just as the Father sent me, so I send you. And that applies to you and me today. Just as it applied to the disciples 2,000 years ago, it applies to you and me today. Jesus sends us out. But he doesn't send us out alone. He sends us out in and with the power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when Jesus breathed on his disciples, they naturally would have breathed in. They would have inhaled. They would have been inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that's a natural, uh, uh, um, to that breathing in and breathing out. It's natural. Bre Jesus breathed on them and they would have breathed in. And they would have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I wonder if the hairs on their arms 
would have stood up, tingled. I wonder how they would have felt as they inhaled the presence of the Holy Spirit and felt that power of the Holy Spirit infuse their very being. The passage uh, from, from Acts, the Pentecost passage, Acts 2, 1 to 4, talks about that, that uh, the disciples gathering in the room and, uh, and the Holy Spirit uh, appearing as tongues of fire and uh, that, uh, that loud noise and, and the uh, uh, rush of a, the, the rush of a violent wind, that power, that unbridled power of the Holy Spirit. And yet that is contrasted with it resting on each of them. There is no doubt in my mind of the power of the Holy Spirit, of that third person of the divine trinity. And yet that power is also gentle, resting on each of us, infusing each of us awaiting each of us to turn on the tap, to open the floodgate, to allow that power of the Holy Spirit to flow through us out into the world. Because that's what you naturally do when you breathe. You breathe in and you breathe out. You breathe in and you breathe out. The disciples breathed in the Holy Spirit. And it'll be a very natural response to breathe out the Holy Spirit through their actions, through their, their, their teachings, through their love. We are blessed to be a blessing. I say this regularly. We are blessed to be a blessing. The disciples were blessed to breathe in the Holy Spirit, to be a blessing to others by breathing out the Holy Spirit onto them. So how does this uh, relate or uh, um, uh, inspire us today? Well, it's the same, the very same Holy Spirit, that powerful, unbridled power of the divine uh, third person, the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that uh, was imparted on the disciples and infused their very being, infuses us. He's in us, dwells in us, rests on us. At our baptism, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And at our confirmation, we receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And these, these gifts, the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for us to keep. They're not for us to, to yes, we treasure them, but we don't, we don't covet them and protect them. They are gifts designed intended for us to give and share what we have freely received we are encouraged to freely give jesus said just as the father sent me so i am sending you we are to be sent out into the world those whose sins you retain are retained those whose sins you forgive are forgiven that involves interaction with other people. That involves us going out into the world and engaging with people and sharing the good news with them and encouraging them and teaching them and counselling them, living alongside them. We are to be sent. So the very same Holy Spirit that, that inspired those disciples and those people, those believers of the early church to go out and do amazing works in the name of God. That same Holy Spirit lives in each and every one of us. And it's just waiting for us to open the door so that power can flow through us out into the world. In the reading that Dee read for us, the 1 Corinthians reading, St. Paul goes on to describe some of these gifts, and they're all different. Each and every one of us is gifted differently uh, as the Spirit pleases, as, as the Spirit chooses. 
And it is not up to us to be envious of what other people can do. That person can speak so well in public. That person just uh, uh, engages people so well. That, people has, that person has such a, a deep uh, prayer life, whatever it might be. Each of us are gifted differently as the Spirit wills. And it is not for us to be envious, uh, to, to, to desire what other people have been gifted. We are gifted differently, but each of us are gifted, and we are to use those gifts to spread the good news, to build the kingdom. St. Paul writes and tells us that though there are a, a, the body has many parts, many members, it is one body, and the church has many members, but together we make the one body. We are the body of Christ. And the different members of the body are gifted differently. But the body would be less if it did not have all the members. Just as the church would be less than its full potential without each and every one of us living up to our full potential. So on this uh, Pentecost, this feast day of Pentecost, as we uh, recall those words of Jesus, just as the Father sent me, so I send you. May each and every one of us be emboldened by that charge to realize that even under, under these, these times, these, these difficult times of COVID-19, we are still the body of Christ. We are still gifted by that same amazing, powerful, loving, divine Holy Spirit. And we are still sent by Jesus out into the world to spread the good news, to bring about the kingdom of God, to grow God's kingdom as best we can with the gifts that each and every one of us have been given. So my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate today, I encourage you to be emboldened to embrace the power of the Holy Spirit. And with whatever gifts you are gifted with, to go out into the world, to share God's love, to spread the good news, and to do whatever you can to grow God's kingdom in the here, in the now. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bring our prayers to God our Father, asking him to fill us afresh with the Holy Spirit to encourage and inspire us as we journey along the way. For the bishops, particularly our Archbishop Philip and our Regional Bishop Jeremy, as they find their way through this time during COVID. May they serve the people of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. For politicians and all who lead our civic society, particularly remembering our Prime Minister and our Premier, and ask that they too find difficult decisions easier through knowing you. That they will always ensure they put the needs of those who are poor and vulnerable first. For the people of our parish, may they be powerful proclaimers of the message of Christ. And we ask particularly that we are all blessed and kept safe during this COVID time. 
for those who, who the, for those who suffer from sickness of any form, that the Holy Spirit may touch their lives and assure them they are not alone. For all those who do not know God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that they may come to know the peace and joy that God gives. God our Father, in all our prayers, those spoken aloud and those whispered in silence, may we be given your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our friends, we are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And if you are uh, with another person whilst you watch this, uh, watching this video, I invite you now to offer those around you God's peace. takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread His love to everyone. You want to pass it on. What a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding. The birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you want to sing. It's fresh like spring want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him, it matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountain top. I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who, by the power of your Spirit, was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Today we give you thanks that in fulfilment of your promise, you pour forth your Spirit upon us, filling us with gifts and leading us into all truth. You give us power to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, as Jesus said, share his body and his blood. On the night he is betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it 
and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup, and, again giving you thanks, he shared the cup with his friends, and said, This is my blood poured out, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. You have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all that he has done for us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may follow Jesus in all we do and say, working for justice and bringing your peace to this world that you have made. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with much thanksgiving. And a reminder at this time, during the suspension of services, the priest consumes communion, the bread and the wine, on behalf of the people. So may the body of Christ keep us in life eternal. And may the blood of Christ keep us in life eternal. And our post-communion prayer. Giver of life and love, we thank you that in this heavenly banquet you invigorate and renew us. Living in the unity of the Spirit, may we boldly use your gifts to continue your work in the world. Amen. And the final blessing. May the Spirit lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with each of you now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.